this is the moment. The Bachelorette is back. Yeah! And the power. I'm gonna fall in love. Is in Jen's hands. And I'm gonna do it my way. ABC Mondays. Everything about her is great. I feel so special. Jen's looking like a queen. My men are very, very hot. Someone call 911. <laughs> you are looking so fire. This is the beginning of a new era. The Bachelorette. All new Mondays, 8, 7 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Looking for a side hustle that can have a huge impact? Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network in Minneapolis is looking for healthy people ages 18 to 55 to join their upcoming clinical studies and is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000. Get involved today. Check your eligibility now at nucleusnetwork.com. That's nucleusnetwork.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Watson and the co-host of Foreplay. I'm your co-host, George Fowler, former firefighter, your couple's therapist who loves to talk about sex. Woo, let's discuss everything about the best sexual techniques to building your emotional intimacy, which is really necessary for great sex. We bring sound, concrete tools to reframe your relationship problems and learn how to fall in love again and feel desire. Listen to Foreplay Radio on the iHeart app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everybody, and thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. I'm Zach. I'm here with Laura. Today, we're talking to Kimberly Holmes. She's from an organization called Marriage Helper. Uh, We had a great time talking to Kimberly and are really intrigued, Laura and I both, about her model, um, which I know of a couple clients right now that could benefit from sort of what she's laying out, particularly for couples in distress. Marriage Helper has online courses and workshops. Uh, I think there's some free resources that you can check out at their website, which you can learn more about here in a second. But again, we really enjoyed talking to Kimberly. I think you will, too. This It's a very cool conversation. Stick around. So we have a guest with us, Kimberly. And um, I, 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 well, I'll allow you to introduce yourself. We are a very informal podcast. So we want to know some personal. We're going to allow you. We will allow you to do it. We're going to invite you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Kim? I have to teach Laura how to talk. I just said it. Sorry. I'm going to do it the whole time. I'm going to call you Kim the whole time. Okay. Kimberly, 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 Kimberly. Kimberly. You Kimberly Holmes, who are yeah, you? Yeah, who are you? What's most interesting? What's got you pumped up lately? Like in the month of January 2022, what are you most pumped and jazzed up about? Oh, excuse me. When this comes out, it's February. That's right, February. It might actually be March. Sorry. But uh, anyway, what's going on in, for you early in, in this spring new year? Time. Uh-huh. Well, in, in the period of time with which you st- in which you still have Christmas decorations That's in your right. house, how yes. are you feeling? <laughs> yes. So, yes, my name is Kimberly. What I'm most excited about is I am able to walk right now. So on my birthday, which was in November, I broke four bones in my foot, had an ankle sprain and a midfoot sprain. And I ended up in a boot and on a knee scooter for two and a half months. For two and a half months. I just got off of it about a week and a half ago. So I am just... Are you going to tell us how you did it? I can't tell you the gratitude I have for walking. Like... I just, I'm excited to walk, uh-huh. you guys. Uh-huh. Wait, how, how did you break your, how yeah. did you do all this to your foot? Running on my birthday. <gasps> right on. Did you hit okay, a curb? Did you go off of a curb or something? How did you, how did you manage to do that on your two feet? Yeah, it was, so I was running on a paved path and it was just, you know, sometimes the asphalt kind of is gathered up in one area yeah. and I just hit it wrong. I didn't even totally roll my ankle or anything like that. I just kind of tweaked my foot a little bit when I hit it. And then I kept running another mile. Uh That was probably, Mm. probably the mistake that I made. Other than the mistake of running on my birthday. That's not a mistake. The next mistake, (laughs) number two, was keep running after. Oh, man. The knee scooters. All right. I have a question and a comment. Uh, Very important question. Did you name your scooter? Oh, (laughs) I did. Well, it's not a super fun name though. So I named it the Boot Scoot because okay. there's the country song Boot Scoot Boogie. Yeah. Oh, sure thing. Boot Scoot and Boogie. That's yep. It. You know, um, I live in Nashville just from that one thing. Yeah, right on. Boot Scoot. Okay, here's my comment though. I'm really glad that when you said, what do you do? And you said, the thing I am most excited about right now is that I get to walk and I'm glad you didn't say couples through a da 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 would have been like, oh, We'd be like, run, <laughs> here we go. So nice job. <laughs> no. Um, but like literally physically, but what is your, what's your, what's your, what's your gig? Like, why are, why are you on yeah, what's your, radio? What's Tell your gig? What, That's right. What, what, My gig, what I am passionate about is helping couples, especially when 
there seems to be no hope when one spouse has, has wanted out of the marriage to learn what they can do to restore their marriage and save their marriage and, and have hope again. That now, is why are you passionate about well, that's that? That's a good question. You know, here's why. All right. Here's why. When, before I was born, my parents were married. They had two daughters at that time. And my dad was a very successful speaker. And he was so successful, his speaking engagements were booked five years out. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he ended up having an affair with his secretary, mm -hmm. divorced my mom, and they were divorced for three years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, he would tell you himself that he did things he never thought he'd do, went places he never thought he'd go, took pills he never thought he would mm -hmm. take, mm -hmm. became an alcoholic bankrupt, living out of his car, homeless. Like he went from being this incredibly successful person wow. to, to that and <clears throat> hit his lowest of lows. This life he thought he was going to have with this other woman mm. did not turn out to be anything that he thought it would be. And so at the end of those three years, of course, it was a series of things that happened. But the way the story kind of goes is it's like one day he woke up. It wasn't really one day. But after a series of things, he realized he wanted to ask my mom if she would take him back. And mm. everyone in her life told her not to. Mm. And she had already moved on. She was already dating some other or another guy. And she knew that at the core of it, that my dad was a good person mm -hmm. who had done many bad things, but she believed the right thing to do was to try and make it work. Mm. And so that's what they did. They got remarried learned how to re-fall in love with, you, with each other, had me as a celebration of their second <laughs> You're marriage. You're a celebration. I'm a celebration. It's so funny because when my dad tells the story, he goes, you know, he says she was a celebration, remembering that celebrations are really only fun while you're having them. And everyone laughs and I'm the one at the back like, it's not funny. It's, <laughs> it's not funny, Dad. But I always, and so I always knew that story growing, growing mm -hmm. up and and it didn't really take on the depth of meaning to me until I got married myself mm -hmm. and realized marriage is hard, mm -hmm. but it's also worth mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I had that example of two parents who, who made it work. And I, it's interesting because my sisters experienced divorce and I experienced parents who never divorced, but we have the same sets of parents. Right. Mm, so it's wild. also really interesting to see how that's affected us differently mm -hmm. because you can definitely see it. Yeah. So that is why I am passionate uh -huh. about the company that, that I get to lead that, that saves marriages because it matters. So, I mean, now, now I'm kind of like, okay, so if you're working with couples, cause I think that those are, well, okay, let me back up a little bit. Number one, I always get the question from folks that is basically can you come back together? Because couples are, will decide mm -hmm. eventually we're going to separate and we're going to work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to the best version of ourselves, but are we just sort of like um, postponing the inevitable that we're going to separate for good? And is it possible mm -hmm. to actually come back? And I've heard a few stories, but it is not a common story to have a couple mm -hmm. divorce and then come back together and remarry. So I am really intrigued mm -hmm. because you're taking on what I think is the hardest of hearts where you have one person that's totally checked out and hopeless. I think the hopeless space is very difficult to work with couples um, mm -hmm. where you cannot give them hope, but you can lead them to hope for themselves. And that's where I'm like wondering, what is the secret? What have you found that really helps folks rekindle something that feels like it's been lost and gone and is never coming back? So that's my entry mm -hmm. into like, give us your secrets. Help our, mm -hmm. <laughs> help our listeners. Yeah, it, it really is two parts to this. So the first thing that we focus on at Marriage Helper mm -hmm. is let's help you understand, number one, how your marriage got here, because it's probably a combination of some things that your spouse has done and maybe some things they shouldn't be doing, but it's also going to be a combination of some things you've done. So let's just help you understand that part of it. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of it let, is let's help you understand what you can start doing, even if your spouse is disengaged now. Mm -hmm. So one thing we tell every person is you can begin working on becoming your best self. So we call it the pies, physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual. Focus on those four aspects of yourself for you, for you first and foremost, okay. 
I'm into it. But then secondly, because if, if anything's going to attract your spouse back, Mm -hmm. it's you being at your best. Mm -hmm. It's you being one of the things we say at marriage helper is people don't leave what they have unless what they believe what they're going to is better. And that doesn't always mean they're leaving you for another person. It could just be they're leaving because they want peace. They believe peace is better. They believe silence is better. So we encourage people to just start taking that self-assessment and even changing the way they, they communicate. So a lot of people, when they're in that hopeless spot and their spouse is completely disengaged, they will start doing what we call push behaviors. They'll start pleading, begging, whining, following the spouse out to the car, like grabbing them at their ankles, wow. trying to get them to stay mm-hmm. when they feel like they're going to go. And we're saying, we get that that's how you feel. Like it's similar to a kid when they're experiencing that separation Mm -hmm. anxiety from their parent. The thought in the child is, if you can see how much you're hurting me right now, then you'll stay. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't work when you're adults, like it's just going to push the person further away. So we, we teach on some of these things, like it's, it doesn't come naturally Mm -hmm. to do a lot of these Mm -hmm. things in the middle of the hopelessness. But it, if anything works to soften the situation and get your spouse to at least pause and consider making some different decisions, then these are the things that work. So there's that one part. Mm -hmm. But then the second part of what we do that's so effective is we have a workshop that, that, 90% of the couples who come to it, there's one spouse who wants out of the marriage. So Friday morning, it's a three-day long workshop. Friday morning, half the people there don't want to be there, right? Mm -hmm. But because of the format of our workshop and the reason why a lot of counselors will refer people to come to our workshop is because since it's that group setting, Mm -hmm. there's not that defensiveness from the reluctant spouse from the minute they sit down in your office. I mean, I remember I was trained as a marriage and family therapist. And when I was doing my practicums, I remember how difficult it was with that spouse who was eager to get out. Like it's so easy for them to just shut you out Mm -hmm. because they don't want to be there. But when then, when it's a group of people, it's easier for them to say, well, they're not talking to me. They're talking to that guy over there, but they're still hearing it. Mm -hmm. And they're still over time, they're like, oh, wait, maybe that does, maybe some of this does apply to me. So it's in, and then in our workshops, we do a mixture of the, of the education plus a breakout group format, which is incredibly effective at, at getting the, is it, is it breakout? Do you send all the, do you send all the, uh, the, like the, the less involved partners into one setting and then you send all like the more involved partners into the other setting and let them come? No, it's done by couples. So it'll I, be eight couples yeah, per. That's a good idea. Mine was a terrible idea. It was just, it was just <laughs> I, I got where you were going with that. Terrible. You do a little fishbowl <laughs> exercise and everybody in this room is in. Everybody in the other room is out. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. you do, they're able to, <laughs> in that group setting, because I mean, we do, um, Zach and I are both marriage and family therapists. We're also certified Gottman therapists. Mm-hmm. We teach and we run workshops mm-hmm. for the Gottman Institute. And I know you're familiar with John Gottman. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and so when we do breakout exercises, it's just with the dyad, but it sounds like it's different. And there's something mm-hmm. powerful in the format of having these eight couples in a room. Are they talking to each other? Are they sharing information? Are they doing some things together? Yeah, we have, so there over the, the three days. So our workshop is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's going to be five total breakout mm-hmm. groups, two Friday, two Saturday, one on Sunday. And what happens in those is we have a preset set of questions okay. and we put that on the, we put that up. And um, in that first session, that first breakout session, it's all about the rapport. It's all about creating the safe place. So we have rules, rules of engagement. Mm-hmm. So the rules for the entire workshop and especially the breakout session is you can say anything you want to about yourself. You can't say anything negative about your spouse. Nothing. Cool. And we absolutely make sure everyone that hears to that. So we will gently stop Mm -hmm. someone if they start even going into, but the reason that I'm like this or the reason I'm so mad is because he or because she, it's, we understand you hurt, Mm -hmm. focus on Mm -hmm. yourself. So, um, and then we invite people, you can share as much or as little as, as you wish. Mm -hmm. And so we, and then we just have people in that first session, we are, our facilitators of the breakout groups will call people up by row And so people will sit down, they're up there four at a time, and they kind of go through the questions. But then every other session after that, people are voluntarily coming up Mm -hmm. one on one. Mm -hmm. So one by one. And, and then there, if there's typically, you might be surprised, but typically every person Mm -hmm. will come up and share because they see other people doing it. And they see the people who are sharing 
hard things and, and they're seeing people who sound like them. And so they're seeing themselves yeah. in other people. And then if someone ever didn't, didn't get up to share, then the facilitator of the room would just ask them from their, from their seat. Hey, can, could you just give an answer to number one, mm-hmm. if you feel like mm-hmm. it? And most mm-hmm. of the time people will. So, so it creates that smaller community within the bigger community happening, happening out in the, in the big room. And as you know, as counselors, like that is powerful. Yeah. Having a community and feeling like you're not alone, mm-hmm. that creates big change in people. Wow. Yeah. There's three things that you said, and I'm going to remember two of them. But one, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I beat this drama all the time and we talk about it all the time. But I, I love the idea of the way that you can improve your relationship is by focusing on yourself. Mm-hmm. And there's got to be some resistance that you hear. Uh, we hear mm-hmm. it quite a bit about, but isn't that selfish? Like, but that doesn't mm-hmm. like, am I being it doesn't that feel like, uh, I don't know, like how do you overcome that resistance for people who maybe are not as inclined to take care of themselves because, well, that, but how do I, you know, I mean, what, mm-hmm. what are you offering? What kind of hope do you offer them around the pies? Like, mm, yeah, I, I guess that'd be one of my questions. Probably the most pushback we get is, isn't the, but isn't that selfish? It's more of the, but I'm not the problem. They're mm-hmm. the problem. Right. Mm. And so it's even just getting them to have that reframe of we get that there are things that your spouse probably needs to change, but the only person you can control is you. Mm -hmm. You can't control your spouse. You can't control what they're doing. And a lot of you have probably tried and guess what? It didn't Mm -hmm. work. So let's bring back the focus to what we can control. And then some, the other thing people will, will say Mm -hmm. is, but what if they don't like the, me becoming my best Mm -hmm. self? To which our answer is always, you become your best self for you first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't, we're in working on yourself, in encouraging people to do that. We are not encouraging them to just become completely selfish. It's not a free pass to say, screw you. I'm just going to do whatever makes me happy. Mm -hmm. That's not it. It's about becoming your best self physically, intellectually, emotionally. And I'll come back to that in a minute. And spiritually, and the key of that really is in a relationship, it really is emotional attraction. Because the way we explain that is, am I evoking emotions within the people around me that they enjoy feeling? Mm. Because someone can be okay. physically beautiful, spiritually amazing, whatever. But if, if they're a jerk to you, mm-hmm. you're not going to want to be around mm-hmm. them. So that's what you sure. mean by... I mean, I guess I'm kind of wondering, I I understand the concept of like physically focusing on myself. I could get in better shape. I could, you know, run on my Mm -hmm. birthday. I could do these things physically, (laughs) intellectually, you know, like maybe just stimulating, going to like studying things that Mm -hmm. you're interested in, reading things that are, you know, developing you as a person. But I'm kind of like, how do you emotionally focus on yourself and and grow as a person? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And there's, two sides of this. So when I'm thinking just about how do I deal with my emotions better, like me thinking of my emotional attraction, some of that is, do you have a great support system? Mm -hmm. Is there someone you're able to go to when things are hard, that's not going to make it worse by, by making you more anxious or more angry, but someone who's, who can kind of calm you, someone you can go to, are you self-aware? Like, are you taking time to really sit with your emotions and, and think about what is this, what is this doing inside of me? How is that, how is that coming up in, and how I feel? So an example, you know, with my foot, how I broke Mm -hmm. it, you know, two and a half months ago is I found myself like a month in, I was just angry at everything, Mm -hmm. irritated, Mm -hmm. like so quick to be irritated. And I really had, so in thinking of the the emotional attraction, like I had to take some time and stop and say, what is the core of this? Because it's showing up as me being irritated with everyone that lives in this house with me about every single thing, but let's get to the core of it. And for me, a lot of it went back to, you know, I've put a lot of my self-worth into being able to be active. I'm a very active Mm -hmm. person. And so right now I'm feeling tender. I'm feeling like, where's my value? Where's my worth? And I kind of had to sit with that and realize like, it's still on me Mm -hmm. to change my reactions to the people in my house. But there's something that makes it a little bit easier to do when you realize the stem, the core of what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, when they're going through these really, really stressful, crazy marriage situations, 
they haven't taken the time to just sit with it and, and have someone even go into a great therapist, right? Like to just sit with and, and get to the core of a lot of the things they're feeling so that they become less crazy. Mm-hmm. Looking for a side hustle that can have a huge impact? Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network in Minneapolis is looking for healthy people ages 18 to 55 to join their upcoming clinical studies and is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000. Get involved today. Check your eligibility now at nucleusnetwork.com. That's nucleusnetwork.com. Get more calm. And then they can better deal with everything happening because when you're just in the thick of it and just letting the emotion spiral, Mm -hmm. that's when nothing feels good. Okay. That makes perfect sense. And before it it sounded like too, just like tapping into your own emotional intelligence and building that, that Mm -hmm. EQ for yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Does it, does it work? Like, do you see these like sort of less involved partners kind of coming around and what, what kind of breakthroughs are you you witnessing? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So at marriage helper for our workshop, the work that couples workshop I was talking about where 90% of the people are only there because the partner will finally agree to sign the divorce papers or, or whatever. Like it's, we still have over a 70% success rate at saving that marriage. So yes, we see this a lot. Mm. And I can tell you a specific story about, um, one of our couples, Jordan and Priscilla. And so when they first found out about marriage helper, it was Jordan, the husband that found out about it. And he, his wife was in the middle of having an affair. And so he had actually signed up for the workshop and, and and committed them to go before he ever even talked to his wife about it. Mm. So he kind of dragged her there Mm -hmm. last Mm -hmm. minute. She, she ended up coming. They came through, they ended up divorcing after coming to the workshop the first time she went to go uh, be with her affair partner, ended up getting pregnant with her affair partner. And it was after the workshop that Jordan actually really started doing the things we were teaching. So he started working on himself. He started changing the communication he was having with her. Um, And it was a bit of a unique situation because Priscilla left him and her five kids. Wow. And you like, that's not typical. Mm -hmm. It's typical that the mom is going to stay with Mm -hmm. the kids, Mm -hmm. but that is how done she was. Like that's, that's just how done she was. So she ended up getting pregnant with this other man's kid and he, and Jordan just stayed consistent. Like he was applying these pies when he was having communication with her. He was, he was doing everything he could to be, uh, uh, we call it be a safe place. Um, but he was also trying to do what he could to evoke positive emotions within mm-hmm. her, which meant a lot of not pushing or not talking about their relationship. Um, and eventually she came to kind of the same realization as my dad, where she said, what have I done? Yeah. She started mm-hmm. to see the flaws in this other man. And so she finally went back to, to Jordan. He did not know yet that she was pregnant. And she said, I need to tell you something. And he said, okay. And she said, I'm pregnant. And he didn't know if they were trying, like if this was something to to celebrate. So he said, well, congratulations. And she said, well, do you want to hear my heart? And he said, I would love to hear your heart. And she, for the first time in nine, six months, they were divorced. So for the first time in six months, she just opened up to him and said, this is everything. And at the end of it, he said, I still love you and I'm willing to forgive you and make this work. I've already forgiven you and I'm willing to do what it takes to make this work. <sighs> so she came back, they remarried, had the, their sixth child mm-hmm. who Jordan has taken is completely his own. And now they, so Priscilla is one of our coaches at marriage wow. helper. They help do our workshops together mm-hmm. and their story is transforming others. Like it was done. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. divorced. She was pregnant with another man's child. Yeah. Mm. But they are reconciled and their kids know. This is what's amazing. So their kids, a lot of, some of their kids were older, like teenagers when it happened. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones saying, yeah, my parents divorced, but now they're remarried and we have this amazing new sister. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing what can happen when people love each other. Wow. How powerful is that for those kids yeah. when they get married? Oh, Jordan, I don't, I, he is a better man than I could ever imagine myself being. I, it's interesting because as you're describing, you're describing, um, what I would call like those ice cold couples, the couples that are not like super fiery and, 
Um, like Terry mm-hmm. Real talks about like fierce intimacy and that like that fierceness that comes into relationships mm-hmm. where both people are just really fired up. But you're almost describing these couples that are so cold and and so distant from one another that there's like this massive chasm. And um, and I actually think those are the harder couples to work with when they one person or both people have lost hope. But I cannot yeah. imagine. I mean, just the way that you describe that story with Jordan being so willing to work on a relationship where his wife has left and is now, you know, carrying a, another person's child that. Oh boy, that is, that's intense work he had to do. It is. You know that Zach and I are huge fans of getting support, and that is why we have partnered with BetterHelp to put you in contact with licensed professional counselors in your area. Tap into the world's largest network of licensed, accredited, and experienced counselors who can help you with a range of issues, including depression, anxiety, trauma, grief, relationships, and more. With BetterHelp's counselors, you get the same professionalism and quality that you would expect from an in-office counselor. With the ability to communicate when and how you want, whether it be messaging, through the phone, or video conferencing. The matching process is quick but thorough. Look, I know that a lot of therapists are booked out and difficult to get into, but don't let that stop you from getting the support that you need. The cost is less than half of what Zach and I charge, which is kind of unheard of. And when you register with BetterHelp, you are supporting Marriage Therapy Radio. Go to trybetterhelp.com/mtr. So it's trybetterhelp.com forward slash MTR to register with BetterHelp. T-R-Y-B-E-T-T-E-R, help, H-E-L-P.com forward slash MTR. And you receive a special discount as a Marriage Therapy Radio listener. You described the pies, which I'm super, I love that. I'm going to carry that forever and ever and ever because I, I think that a lot of people need something to do when they're waiting around and and like yes. are trying to hold a candle for this relationship and giving them something to focus yes, on is amazing. Do. But Absolutely. like what what is going to rekindle? What is going to bring those folks back? Like in the midst of this workshop or when you're working with couples, like what are the things that are going to bring them back to one another and rekindle something that they felt was lost. Mm, mm-hmm. Like, are there some specific principles that you're focused on having them focus on? I don't know. So there's a couple of things that, that need to happen before they even get to the part of wanting, of wanting to rekindle. Mm-hmm. So some of it we've talked mm-hmm. about the pies mm-hmm. part of it, changing the communication that they have together. Tapping into one, hope, I think is, the hope. I mean, that's the oh, tapping into hope. I mean, that feels like it's, uh, Herculean work in and of itself, but here I am. I've, I've kind of made the decision. I've got a little bit of hope. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do, uh, my physical and intellectual and emotional and spiritual development. Mm-hmm. And, um, and here, but now that's the beginning, mm-hmm. right? Like that's what's, what's next for them? The next thing Particularly if is, they're on the, I just, sorry, I, I don't mean to, I, I guess I do mean to interrupt, <laughs> but it's like, I thinking a lot about like, what is the hope for these couples that are on the brink? They literally, I mean, I, I, I understand the first part, but muscle memory is pretty powerful, right? When they get into it and they're like, Oh, here we go again. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the thing that keeps them that you're offering that can help them sort of maintain, you know, the, the slow and steady posture, I guess. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the research of hope, there are two things that make up hope. The first one is having a vision of how things can be different. Mm -hmm. And the second part is a plan to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that is the key. These couples, especially the one that's coming back that wanted mm-hmm. out, is painting that vision and helping them paint that vision of here's how things can be different. It does not have to be. You don't have to commit to go back into what you had. You can make it better than it was before. And so we paint that. One of one of the things that we teach is called the love path. And briefly, The first, there's four steps to it. The fourth step is, or the first step is attraction, which we've already talked about those pies. The second step is acceptance. Mm. And this one is so key. And the key to this, I mean, really what acceptance is all about is, will you accept me, love me, treat me as I am without me having to change anything? Mm. Not saying there's things I don't have to change, but can you accept me as I am now? Mm -hmm. The, and the next part of that, 
<clears throat> so that's where you, that's really where like becoming a safe place, being able to hear your, your spouse say hard things to you or admit things like I've been in an affair or I'm mm. addicted to alcohol or whatever it is, like being able to hear that. And instead of responding in attacking them, responding in, I'm so glad that you told me that, even if it hurts to hear, yeah. how can we work through this together? Wow. Right. Like, like that's where acceptance falls. The next step is attachment. And the mm. bottom line of attachment is, will you be there for me when I need mm -hmm. you? That's mm -hmm. it. And we can talk about attachment styles and work through that. Right. Like all of that plays into it. But the bottom line of it is, will you be there for mm -hmm. me? Home girls the speak fourth, my language. They all got A's. I know. They all got A's. A's. <laughs> I actually, has an A too. no joke, I, I thought for <laughs> sure that it, we have a lot of people that say like, hey, we'd love to be on the podcast. And I saw your four A's and I was like, oh, Zach's going to love that. <laughs> but I'd totally be like, I didn't even yeah. know. I was just, I'm listening. I'm like, okay, that starts with A. a oh, that starts with A. a and yep. then I'm like, oh, here we go. I bet the fourth one starts <laughs> with A and the fourth one is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, yes. So the fourth one is aspiration. Mm. Okay which is the shared dreams, the shared vision. When life pulls you apart, what are you intentionally going to come back to as a couple that's going to keep pulling you back together? Mm -hmm. And so even just painting that for people, I mean, there's way more into it, right? That goes into each of those. But just when couples are able to see that and see there's a path, mm -hmm. there's a plan, mm -hmm. like we can follow this mm -hmm. and it starts to give them that vision. And then having the tools that, that they can begin using that go into each of those, like, here is how you have hard conversations. So it was funny. I listened to the podcast y'all did. Um, I don't know when you, when you recorded it, but y'all were having, like y'all had been on an interview together mm -hmm. and Laura mm -hmm. felt like she, yep. and so y'all were hashing one of my that favorite, out on the podcast. One of my favorite podcasts we've ever done. So good, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're taking the tools, like the way that y'all handled that is not what naturally comes to people right. when they're upset about something. And so what is, what does it take? Well, first of all, both of you are trained as therapists. So you're a little ahead of the game. I than, hope so. like, Fingers crossed. <laughs> Maybe with each other, but not <laughs> a lot of our, money to get our ahead of the game. might not say so. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken time, mm -hmm. money, practice, mm -hmm. but that's it. Like that's part of it. You teach the people to, to do this. And that's why there shouldn't be as much shame and stigma as there is around getting help, getting counseling, getting therapy, because you're just, you're, you, we all need to practice learning these tools mm -hmm. to have great relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I loved that. I love that podcast. It was great modeling for, for how Maybe it Maybe we'll get in more fights. I'll get my feelings hurt and we can have more <laughs> great podcast episodes or, or you could bring yeah. something up, Zach. That would be kind of fun. We, uh, no thanks. Yeah. We have the benefit of being able to be like, okay, see you later. Bye. <laughs> and then not <laughs> having to talk to you next week be in one another <laughs> space for another seven days. Yeah. Uh, what happens after this, this weekend? So you give them a path. Wait, okay. hold on. Uh, that's a great question. But let, just for clarity, let's see, we've got attraction, acceptance, attachment, and then aspiration. Mm -hmm. This is the path. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the level. Okay. Path. I yeah. dig it. I think I'm going to steal I that. I dig it too. Well, it's trademarked. So just give credit. Oh, <laughs> TM. <laughs> yeah. What happens? I mean, if, if 70, you said you gave a statistic, is it like 70%, 75% of couples find that they can reconnect after this weekend? Then what? Yeah. Because we know that a weekend is great in maybe providing some hope, but yeah. then what happens? Then the hard work comes. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the hard work. Yeah. Right on. Hey, I, I actually have an, a, a, the opposite question is what do you, what can you tell us about the 30% that mm. don't make it? Like, what do they have in common? What do they have in common? Like, what is that? What's the, what's their, why don't they make it? Yeah. Yeah. The most easy answer I can give, and it's way oversimplified, is it is because one of those people chose to not give up something that was keeping them from coming back to the marriage. The majority of the time it's going to be, they fell in love with someone else and mm. left the marriage mm -hmm. to be with that person. That's mm. going to be the majority of that 30%. The other smaller part of that 30% is someone has a control issue that they are unwilling to change. Mm. Mm. And that one's hard. Like we would at marriage helper, we would say control issues in marriages are way harder to deal with than affair issues. Yeah. Interesting. Way harder. Well, and some of some of they're kind of the same, but let me, let me make sure I, I captured what you said, because I think there's something here that I could really chew on. 
the the reason they don't make it is because one of them is unwilling to give up something that is keeping them from restoration. Yeah. So maybe it's their addiction. Maybe it's their fair partner. Maybe it's just their sense of control, as you noted. Maybe it's just mm-hmm. their sense of justice or just their, uh, I think sometimes too, there's just fatigue, right? Like I'm mm-hmm. just not, I talk a lot about, um, for brilliant couples that I work with, talk, talk a lot about the the need for both capacity and desire. Mm-hmm. You know, Laura's planning to run a marathon and in order for her to do that, she has to have both the ability to do that and the interest, mm-hmm. the desire to do that. Mm-hmm. If she's lacking either one, it's not going to happen, right? You can be the best CrossFit yeah. athlete on the planet and just not have any interest in running a marathon. You're not going to, or you can be, you know, uh, you can have all the desire in the world and then just be out for your regular jog and step on some kind of bump. And, you know, all of a sudden you're not running your marathon, right? You don't have the capacity. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, the, I think we need to have both. And sometimes people just, even if they have the desire, they have to acknowledge sometimes they just don't have the capacity maybe mm-hmm. for whatever reason. So it's interesting. I, I think I will chew on that a little bit. They won't give up something that is keeping them from restoration. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And interestingly, sometimes it's the person who's wanting to make it work who actually won't give up Mm. a certain behavior. Like there was a couple that came to one of our workshops and he was this controlling person. So everything his wife and she, so she was involved in an affair uh, because he was so controlling of her. He would say, you don't think that you don't believe that. Like if mm-hmm. she wanted to vote a certain way, he, it was just always critical, mm-hmm. always critical, contemptuous to the point where she, she wanted out mm-hmm. and he wanted to make it work. So they came to this workshop, but still everything she would say, I mean, we were constantly having to stop him because he would just keep saying, you don't think that that's not, you're not, no, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. And he was unwilling to give up that behavior. He was Mm. unwilling to see his wife as an equal to him. And that in that ended the marriage Mm -hmm. because he was unwilling to change. Mm -hmm. Right on. Hmm, That's interesting. Yeah. Um, That's really cool. I'm into it. Like, so, all right. So let's say I want to come to your workshop. How do I do that? You can find out more about the workshop marriagehelper.com. There's a tab at the top that says workshops. We have, so we have our couples workshop, but two years ago we started a solo spouse workshop as well Mm. because we realized as many of you or as both of you know, you can't always get that reluctant spouse to come in to, to get marriage help in your world. Mm -hmm. It would be, you know, therapy and ours, it would be the workshop. And so we, we, we took the same principles in our couples workshop that was so effective and Twit, just shifted them to how it would apply to a solo spouse, to the one who's wanting to implement it themselves now mm-hmm. and at least understand all of these things. And so we have that as an option as well. So that's why we have, we have a team of people, um, our client relations team that will talk to people and kind of assess what their current situation is and place them and recommend them to the best the best one that would fit where they are Mm -hmm. now. We're all about personal connection at, at marriage helpers. So we have a a large team of people that, that care about answering calls, answering chats, Mm -hmm. like every, every touch point you get is going to be a real person. Is there ever an individual uh, sort of like therapeutic experience? I mean, I, I know that like they can go to the workshop they can do a singles experience. Is there like one-on-one support that they can get or, you know, I don't, I don't know what that might look like. Yes. Virtual support. Yeah, we have coaching. Mm-hmm. So we have one-on-one coaching and we have group coaching. Mm-hmm. So in answer to your question earlier, what happens after the yeah. workshop coaching uh-huh. that one-on-one now let's help you implement. Right. And the, the, of course the difference between coaching and counseling mm-hmm is they're not the same, yeah. right? Like what counselors do and how they are trained is very different mm-hmm. than our coaches, which are very forward focused. So our coaches are behavior change forward mm-hmm. focused. Like that's the two things. We're not going to try and, and go backwards and understand how your childhood experiences mm-hmm. have affected you. And like, let's go deeper and assess mm-hmm. that. That's what a great counselor does. Our coaches are just, let's take what you learned and help you apply it, it, help you apply it, help you mm-hmm. apply it. 
And I'm guessing that if there was ever like moments where you're kind of like, okay, we're stuck and we're probably stuck because there's this thing, trauma or whatever it might be, that might be really helpful for you to work with your own individual therapist to unravel Mm -hmm. that so that you can continue to move forward and make those behavior changes. And um, I mean, I think a great coach and a therapist can work simultaneously together when, when they're in tandem. So that's pretty cool. How large, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at your website now and you're talking about a team. I'm like, is this like the Gottman Institute large? Is this like, you've got a bunch of people working together. I mean, I'm just curious, like these weekends that you're hosting Friday, Saturday, Sunday, what are we looking at as well? Geez, pre-COVID, right? Before people were scared to sit in rooms together. But are we looking at like a weekend of 30 couples? I mean, what does that look like? Yeah. So we limit our our workshops in size for experience. The two um our in-person workshops are limited to 40 couples. And then our online workshops are limited to 32 Mm -hmm. couples, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, so that part's limited. And then our our team, like our, the full team we have at Marriage Helper is 82 wow. people. Wow. That's a lot of people that you're employing. Wow. You're like the, you're like the mama. You're like the She's mama. The mama of bear. She's got a... I thought Priscilla had a lot of kids. But... <laughs> six. Priscilla does. Do have they have any of... more? Did they stop at six or do they keep adding? You know, I think they're good at six for wow. now. So the baby is now four okay. and and I think their oldest is like 16. Yeah. So it's like, at some point you have to be looking forward to an emptiness. Yeah, totally. I have a couple right now with six kids and every single problem they have is because they have six kids. Mm. And I'm kind of like, I don't know how, how to help you with that part. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and they're you six, like, choice. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> what? Yep. Sorry. sounds like you're going to have to go on two different vacations or you're going to have to go on two different, you know, ski trips or whatever it is. <laughs> Um, okay. So let's, a lot. let's bring it back to Kimberly for a second. So marriage helper, are there any other resources that you would point our listeners to where if they're interested, they want to know more or they they're digging you and they want to hear from you. Is there anything else that we can point them to? Sure. Absolutely. So we, at marriage helper, we also have a free mini course. It's called how to get your spouse back. Hello. So it teaches some of the principles I've talked about cool. here, the pies, the love path, and it's free. You can, you can sign up for it and go through all of it in less than 30 minutes. So you can get that by going again to marriagehelper.com mm-hmm. and you can click, there's a link right at the top for a free mini course. Nice. So that's a great one. We have a ton of videos on YouTube. You can find us there and, and on Instagram. And then if you want to follow me personally, my personal Instagram is where I post the most, which is Kimberly Beam Holmes. Mm-hmm. All one. Yeah. We will, uh, we'll remind folks at the end of the episode where to find you. Thank you for all of your time today. Just like giving us some, uh, you know what my favorite part was? It was pies. I'm never going to forget it ever. And I, we talk about it. these things. You probably trademark that yeah, you too, right? you should. Otherwise. It is trademark. Oh, okay. I was like, otherwise. <laughs> but you I'll- say, what did you say? You said there, uh, what is the verb you used? You said uh, doing pies or working on working pies. Working on my pies. Working on my pies. Yeah. You got to be like, we got to be baking the pies or eating yeah, the pies. Baking. or like <laughs> Pies are baking. Like. It's the, it really, I mean, it came from the community. Like the, we talked about the pies and the community chain, we, they would just go to say, we're working on our pies. This is how. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I actually have a podcast where I talk about the pies. It's called, it starts with attraction. Mm-hmm. And I focus on each of those areas every, every That's week. That's your personal right. podcast. Cool. That's my personal what is podcast. It? That's What's my, called? what do they call it? Passion project. The, the podcast is called, it starts with attraction. Okay, cool. All right. Well, look at that. Yeah, okay, we can be hard to miss you. It's like, how, how do we not find Kimberly <laughs> Game Holmes? Is the, the bigger question. <laughs> we try to be. All right. Well, let's yeah. let's go ahead and land this plane. Kimberly, thank you for joining us. Zach, I'll see you in a week. Otherwise, I'll ignore you until then. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> y'all, are, y'all are awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. Thank you for Kimberly, Kimberly Beam Holmes. Um, If you are searching her on the interwebs, I'm sure you will find her podcast. You'll find Marriage Helper. Um, MarriageHelper.com has tons of resources. Again, if you're looking for some coaches, uh, coaching courses, workshops, free resources, they have everything there. The free mini course, very easy to find. Thank you so much for all of your time and your attention, making your relationship better today than it was yesterday.
Looking for a side hustle that can have a huge impact? Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network in Minneapolis is looking for healthy people ages 18 to 55 to join their upcoming clinical studies and is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000. Get involved today. Check your eligibility now at nucleusnetwork.com. That's nucleusnetwork.com.